everyone, K Kim here. Today is May 26th, 2017 Friday. Welcome to the market update. Uh, today we're gonna be, I'm gonna be briefly doing market analysis on S&P 500. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna be talking about how I am currently positioned uh, in the equity. So I'm gonna review some of my positions and uh, my entries and exits and which stocks I'm currently holding. Obviously some of those we're gonna be talking about that as you can see on the left here. And they're just, those are just some of the positions uh, that I'm gonna be talking about. Uh, looking at S&P 500, obviously we may new all time high with another gap up here and you can see we have going all the way back to you know april 13th we got gap open here gap open there gap open here this gap wasn't quite filled when this thing came down last wednesday so that gap still open because remember that gap was started here this gap up that gap, half of that gap is open and this is something that i've been telling you guys if you've been paying attention that a lot of times when you know um bears come down to attempt to fill the gap when the gap doesn't fully get filled it actually favors the buyers exactly same thing happened here you see this gap right here this this gap that gap wasn't filled but there was no attempt i mean there was a attempt right here i think on this day april 19th uh the bears this you know came down but never filled that gap Again, here on this day right there, uh, this gap, the bears attempted to feel, fill. You can see the little bit of wick here. That gap was not filled. Again, when the gaps, uh, when the bears miss to fill the gap or remainder of the gap, it favors the buyer. It just means that the, uh, the bears didn't have enough selling power to fill it, right? Same thing happened here. We had a big gap up, came down was not able to fill this gap does remaining these gaps open meaning these gaps are now kind of the catalyst to jump start this thing here which we did see these jump start and big gap up came down and then we see another gap up i mean this is a nightmare for the bears right because you know they they what they like to say is all gaps gets filled no all gaps doesn't get filled something that i always hear is that all gaps should get filled right or what about the gaps from here that never got filled what about this gap never got filled again when these gaps remain open it just adds to the field to the upside what about this gap that never got filled technically this gap is actually still open because you see that that gap up here that was not fully filled what about this gap, that big gap up prior to the election that was never feel, filled? So that's the thing about it is when the more gaps gets unfilled, the more bullish it is. In the minor term, and I will say the same thing here, if this gap remains open, minor to micro term, you know, favors the buyers. So the benefit of the Dow continues to go to the buyers as long as the gap doesn't get filled. Just because this gap gets filled, let's say the, get, the gap gets filled next week, doesn't mean it's the end of the world. There are a lot of gaps that was not filled. Does it just adds to the field, to the upside, right? So let's say if this thing gets filled next week, and I'm open to that, and this thing comes down, starting to come down, and miss to fill this gap, there's likely a bounce before going higher. That's what we're calling an uptrend. Higher lows and higher highs. Everybody knows trend is your friend, respect the trend, yet nobody knows how to play it, how to apply it, right? Higher lows and now higher highs. This is why when you print an all-time high, that does not mean top is in. Why does everybody wants to say that? I mean, how many times are you bears gonna say that before you tank your account. This is a new high, and then the crash is supposed to come, no. This was a new high, and the crash was gonna come, no. This was a new high, crash was gonna come, no. This was a new high, the crash was gonna come, no. This was a new high, crash is gonna come, no. This is a new high, crash is gonna come, no. This was a new high, no. I mean, yeah, we gonna get the pullbacks, and because the, that's how the market moved, that's what we call an uptrend. It moves higher highs, and higher lows and this is a very uh, elementary 
uh, very, you know, low level of technical analysis is just understanding where we're at, right? It just, it just that most people don't like to uh, respect these things, and they just always want to call top and. To attempt to do that, the market knows how to brutally, brutally punish those who does not respect the uptrend. We are in an uptrend. Uptrend is healthy. I talked about this right here in my recent article, The Spy, The Next Big Move. And uh, this is going to quickly, I wanted to reiterate, as long as we stay above rising 2 on EMA, benefit of the doubt goes to buyers in the minor term. As long as we stay above rising 50 EMA, Benefit of the doubt goes to buyers in the intermediate term. I talked about on my, on my previous article, not this article that I wrote late March. This is a good level to start looking to buy opportunity, not a level to um, freak out or panic, but is a level to look for opportunity. And that's exactly what I did. I started buying um, accumulated long positions, which I'm going to be talking about that. And looking at a big picture here, in the long-term perspective, if you look at since 2013, 2017, market gets up, we get a pullback to these weekly 20 MA, but man, those levels are great level. It's a great opportunity by that dip. And that's exactly what happened in 2017. These two levels were great level to buy the dip. And that's exactly what I did on those two times. And then more like a primary term perspective that rising, again, this is a weekly chart, that rising 50 MA after, you know, 5, 10, per, you know, 8 to 10 per, percent correction, that's a great level to start, uh, you know, organizing and accumulating some of those long positions once we test that rising 50 MA. Keep in mind, though, since 2013, all the way to 2015, nearly about two years, the rising 20 MA was never tested, right? So now we can see that early, late 2016, we tested rising 20 MA. We haven't tested, so it could be next another two years that we may never come down to test rising 50 MA, right? That's a possibility. Nobody knows exactly what's gonna happen. All I know is this. Trend is up, trend is healthy, trend is valid, and I'm gonna position myself to that trend. Cause what trend? Cause cause why? Trend is your friend. Respect the trend, but yet nobody knows how to apply that, right? Obviously, my next two targets on S and P 500 Spider, S and P 500 ETF Spider is 247, maybe 245 is 250. I mean, it's not gonna go straight up. It's gonna have its up and downs along the way. But that's the levels that I am looking at. So that's my analysis there. I do want to talk about uh, my some of my uh, holding positions or some of my positions I'm currently involved in. Spider, I did go long here, and I wanted to show you um, evidence of that. So this is a real-time alert back in March 27th here on Monday. Long Spider, January 233 calls. That's March 27th, that's right there, as you can see. Again, I mean, I, 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 I practice what I preach, preach, and then what I did talk about, I when I wrote that article, the next big support, back in May, March 21st, I told you that this is a level in that, you know, in that vicinity where the 50 MA is rising, I did get rid of the 50 MA, is a level that I'll be going long. So that's the level that I went along with the spider calls at March 27th, and then we start fizzling around here. I held my positions, and once we broke above the 235.86, I added it more right on this gap up on April 24th, as you can see here, April 24th, right there, and right there, so April 24th, you can see that right there. So April 24th, Oops. edited more calls, 236.87, which was precisely in that vicinity there, right? So, and then we moved higher. 
And obviously, these are long-term calls. These are on weeklies or monthlies. And you guys, if you've been following me long enough, you guys know that I do position trading. Position trading meaning I hold things three to six months, sometimes six to nine months. Could up to go 12 months on my position trading trades. And also on my active investing trades, I tend to do, I'll tend to buy, you know, very, very long-term calls or shares. Those are I'll hold a year to two, three years. But this was a position trading setup and uh, went through it got down and then I you know on this day I think somewhere May 15 on my market update uh, I talked about that I am open-minded this thing to come down to about 236 uh, around the 230s I didn't expect this to come down all the way to 35.17 I didn't expect this thing to come down this fast but I was open-minded meaning I wasn't going to close out my positions if we do see that pullback and we did see that pullback I held through it I thought about adding I didn't uh, and then I, I and then it started going higher and V shame this is a great level of support and again I let me put that 15 minute back again as you can see as long as we have this rising 50 MA I mean benefit of the doubt goes to buyers in the intermediate term even if we see a one day of steep decline the, again trend does not develop does not get developed in one day of decline move you shouldn't be afraid of this kind of shenanigan this kind of gap down this kind of uh, head fake or traps or whatever you want to call it market is gonna do what it's gonna do as soon as you start trading this market, you signed up for this. Why get angry? Why get irritated? Why get agitated? You know what I mean? The market is going to do what it's going to do. It's going to do shenanigan. Like without this kind of shenanigan, it's, this isn't a market. This is the market we're dealing with. This is the market we're trading. This is a fascinating place because this market never makes it easy. It's going to just shake everybody out when everybody's sick and tired of it. All the chasers. I talked about, I don't want to go long up here. I'd rather go long here and buy the dip. That's why I was I was open-minded for this pullback, right? And then we V-shaped higher with a gap, 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 gap. And then I'm still holding my full positions on Spider. Again, I will be probably unloading my positions a little bit around 245, 247-ish. Let's go to BABA. I am actually currently all out of BABA. Uh, but these are levels I went long here. I'll show you exactly how I trade it. But uh, I am open-minded. We are getting into extended level, very extended on the daily and weekly. So I, I am open-minded for this pullback. And I'm actually waiting for that because since I don't have any positions on it. Um, and this is a level that I'm going to be adding. But I'll tell you exactly how I played it back in November 14th. Right there. That's the level I went long. Um, let's see. Right there, so you can see November 14th, long, January 80 and 75 calls. You can see it there, the price was about 88.64 on Alibaba. That was precisely right there in that vicinity that I added it, or I initiated calls there with uh, 2017, uh, not 2017, 2018. 2018, uh, January 80 and 75 calls there. And then uh, it, the attempt to move higher at, at right away, and then we start falling over a little bit. Uh, and then you know this was a level that I was looking at. This is I, I believe that this was a level, and my stop was below that level, somewhere in that vicinity. And then we found support at some point uh, in December, and then we moved higher. This was an earnings gap ER, and then I added it more back in uh, January 25th, around 102 ish level. right there so this was January 25th around 103.60 ish that's when I added it more called January 95 calls there that's precisely on this day right there so 103.37 ish January 25th added it there pull back a little bit but I was wondering if we can hold this gap remember I've been talking about gap a lot today even looking at spider these unfilled gaps they favor the buyers so I was talking about here how hey if we can keep this gap open from the earnings maybe partially fill a little bit but if we can keep that get open I do believe that we're gonna see a huge move and this thing started going up back in April 17th I closed out uh, close out April 13, April 13. Yeah, that's April 13. 
right there. Uh, close half, close half there, as you can see right there. So that's calls, added and more. And this is where I closed half on Baba. All right, so that was right there. And then we started 428, 52. I started closing more. So we closed I on May, April 28, another half from the remaining closed. So whatever the remaining half, I closed it again on April 28th. And then finally, on May 2nd, everything was closed again. This was calls edited, entered, edited, closed half, another half, and then at 118.42, closed everything. So that's how I trade it. As you can see long here, edited here, um, closed half, another half, closed at everything, right? And then we had earnings. We had earnings and this was the earnings gap down. And then I'm waiting for BABA to pull back to about 109.60. Um, if it continues higher, I won't be chasing it. I will never, ever chase a trade. Do you wanna chase a trade up here or do you wanna go long when it pulls back, right? I wanna go long when it comes to about 109.60, 106.08. That's the level that I'm watching for it to pull back before going back long here. Las Vegas sand. Another calls that I'm currently holding. I'm calling holding half. This was an entry here back in uh, April or you know February 24 from 51 ish level. I went with calls there, bought that dip, and then when it got to about 59, I closed it out. Um, oops, what was that? Right there. So. April 24 at 52.08, right? Calls, January 52.5 calls, 2018, long-term calls. When it tests that level, my oscillator is extreme over. So that's a weekly chart again, April or February, I keep saying February 24th at 52.08. That's precisely right there, 52.08 in that vicinity. I bought that dip and then on, April 25, 25th, around 58-ish. I closed that call April 25 in the morning. So that was an entry right there, 51.83 with some calls. And then uh, closed half and keep half through the yard tomorrow. That was right before the yard. I didn't know what was gonna happen. So I closed half. And then we did you see initial gap up on ER this day and then hasn't been kind of a much happening ever since then. We've been just kind of pulling back a little bit, but I still like Las Vegas Sands long-term. I really like it. So if this thing does pull back to about 55, 53, I'll probably add a little bit more, and then I'm going to wait for that kind of a move here. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. Let's go to Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo, uh, this one, uh, this was my first enter long here on April 13th, and then I closed one third. I closed one third here. So I'm still holding, uh, you know, good size there. So let's see, um, April 13th, right there, April 13th. Uh, we got some calls there. So right around 5201 is the level that I went long here. So that's a 5201. You can see that's a 5201 April 13th. And then uh, May 5th, May, May 4th, May 4th, closed one third Wells Fargo calls. Um, this was when, you know, this was when this is that 5522, that was the entry there. This was when, um, that this is 100 SMA right there. The 100 SMA was kind of a hoovering and, 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 and starting to act resistance a little bit. We saw a little bit of doji there. So I closed one third, because it thought there might be a gap up and continue higher. And currently it's been coming down. So um, I'm still holding remainder, but I want to see is this thing kind of getting back above 55 and I will be adding more above 55. 
There's a chance that this could come down, maybe retest that, but currently uh, we are a bit of a, you know, let's look at a big picture. So this is a strong support, right? You can see that it has been, uh, there's a lot of congestion zone here. This is a very, very strong resistance. We found support here. We came down, retest. There's a good chance that it comes down, kind of retest this level before going back up. I actually want to wait till this thing getting back up and add, it, add calls at 55, not to add when it comes back down. Um, that's the plan there. Let's look at Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble uh, entered calls here when it pulled back, back in May 2nd. Right there, so you can see uh, PG calls, and this was exactly at 86.49. This hit my 50% retracement zone of my FRZ. We see the pretty size, but pullback. But that that was a that was a very very good level. I mean, we can I even do a little bit of support there. That's a good level that I would feel really good about that level to go along with calls, and that was. Uh, May 2nd there, right? May 2nd, and then we fizzled, and what, what we talked about again, we've been talking a lot about gaps here. What we talked about here uh, with the members is that I wanna see, the bears came down to attempt to fill this gap, this big earnings gap back in January. Bears attempt to fill that gap, and if the gap doesn't fully get filled, what did I? What I've been saying that about even with that spider earlier, that it favors the buyer. So you see, there's a temp going on, but was not able to fill the gap, and then we are getting back up here, and then we are clearing this recent resistance. Obviously, we got some resistance coming up here, but uh, looking at a more of a big picture here, I think there's a good chance that we got higher lows, higher highs going on there. There's a good chance that another bullish move that can happen. Uh, maybe back up to this level around 94.75 or so. That's the level that I'm looking at and watching, uh, and then I'll be um, holding to that level. So so far so good. Let's look at MLCL. This is a Melco Resort Entertainment. Before this was an MLCL, they actually changed the ticker and it used it was MPEL. Uh, the, I think the ticker changed around March or so. I'm not sure why they did that, but they did change the ticker symbol. But it was MPL. This was when I went long on March 1st. I actually bought calls and shares because I like this long term, but I also liked it for position trading. So I liked it for you know long term hold, active investing, hold to maybe hold maybe year to two years, possibly even three years. But I also liked it to hold for several months to six months. So April, what, March 1st, uh, 2017. Right there, you can see March 1st to the city MPEL. So this was when got in with shares and calls. So you can see, I can see I got into shares and calls. Uh, these are some of the analysis as you can see on here, some charts and things. But this was precisely when this was trading around 70, 1732, March 1st, MPEL. 1732 again this was before the before their ticker change before the ticker name change uh, so 17 yeah 17 what was it 17 what was that 1732 it was precisely right there it was in that vicinity right there so that's when I went long uh, this time the gap actually got filled as soon as I entered again this is the reason why uh, you know I don't freak out or I don't panic because we see a minor term pullback, right? So what I was wondering is this, either this thing, when I enter, either this thing is a gap and go or gap and gap and fade and go, you see? So a lot of times when gap gets filled, it does act as uh, uh, support. Sometimes it, it, it kind of fizzles a little bit, which we've been talking about the gaps. It fizzles a little bit, it fails to fill the gap and continues higher. Sometimes it fills the gap and continues higher. Obviously, we're still in a kind of an uptrend. And I was looking at a big picture here, and this looked like very, very strong, inverted head and shoulders. You see that? We made new highs right there. And we're still in an uptrend. You see that? That's a strong primary time uptrend support here and here and here. So once that we found support on that rising 
of trends of porn. We gapped up and looked. I looked at this kind of like jump start, and I want to make sure that as long as we stay above this low here, 1603, I, I saw that there's a good potential that this will move higher. And then uh, we came down, filled the gap, and then it moved higher. So back in, and then I held for a month or two months here, and then April 25th, 2017, around 21, 24, I closed um, half, so I closed half and then keep remaining half of calls but shares is full. So you can see this entry at 17, 14 ish, this is entry and closed half calls at 2084 uh, MLCL there on April 25th. So that's April 25th right there, MLCL, right? And then next day, April 26th, I closed another half I believe yeah so I closed the remaining half so I cl closed completely at 2167 on April 26 on uh, but holding full shares holding full shares but close the call so that's how I played it when calls here pull back a little bit held through two months close half close everything but I'm holding I'm holding the share because I bought calls and shares here so I'm Close all my calls, but I am holding shares. So if I zoom out, you can see that this was a very strong level of support right there. We found support. This is another level. Looks like we got primary term support there. And, you know, kind of looking for, I think this is kind of a stage where we're somewhere here. And then we get up, some volatility, and then we may see this huge move that's kind of what I'm looking for that's why I also hold shares uh, because I that's kind of what I see happening in MLCO but I am open-minded for a pullback if we do see a pullback to some of these levels 1879 or so I will be buying some more calls or re you know entering with calls probably I'll buy nine 2019 calls or maybe 2018 June calls and I'll be adding some more shares let's go to coach uh, coach, I only played shares on this one. This was a little bit riskier play uh, for the fact that, you know, these retail sectors has been uh, got hammered here. But what I was looking at was this inverted head and shoulder pattern, uh, you know, this equal highs there. So when I pulled back, uh, I didn't buy any calls on this one. I only bought shares. So this was when I first bought shares at, you know, December 2nd. And then I added it on March 10th. I think there's a good earnings came on this. Uh, no, this was earnings here. We, we actually broke out of this resistance. I added it more there upon breakout. And then I think there's earnings, another gap up. So this was, what is it? Uh, December 5th? Yeah, so December 5th. You see there, coach, stock shares. Um, so December 5th is entry there, as you can see. I can just show you what's so around 37, 37-ish level. That's what I'm looking at. Um, looking at the inverted head and shoulders there. Some oscillators showing some you know, accumulation signal there. That was, uh, again, uh, December 5th there. This was right here, December 5th. Yeah, and then edited more at March, 3rd, March 9th. Right there, so this is March 10th. So I edited more shares. March 10th, I also edited MGM at the time, but I'll talk about that. Edited more shares and coach. That was a March 10th right there. So look, if I just zoom out, we have just textbook inverted head and shoulders um, right there. So we got left shoulder head, right shoulder, huge. This is a, that's a major bullish reversal signal. Um, I am open-minded this thing even possibly coming down even to about 4190. I am open-minded for that, but I want to I want to see this thing holding above 40 Going back up and this is my active investing position meaning I'm looking for a move To Above all-time high. I'll be holding through it and you know what I'm gonna do is what I'm gonna be playing is if we do see a pullback I will be adding more shares. Let's say we pull back to maybe 43 40 ish. I'll be adding more shares for next move. So that's how I'm playing, coach. MGM is another uh, position that I'm all playing shares. I do have a pretty sizable position on MGM. Uh, I went long with shares back in September uh, 1st. 
right there. So September 1st, long common shares. Uh, again, this was a 2459, 2459. Yes, yeah, right there. 2450-ish back in this uh, September 1st. And then we saw this move and it was about 20% move. That was about 20% move. So I had a pretty good gain there. And then we moved sideways and then earnings came, it tanked, right? So, so when I'm doing active investing position, I will not close up. If this was calls, if I bought calls here, I would have probably closed out some in that vicinity, probably all of it. And I wouldn't hold all of it through ER. But if I'm doing when I'm, if I'm doing active investing position, like I'm doing shares, I will hold through all of them. And we saw a tankage on ER. But you know what? I don't get, I don't freak out, and uh, you know, in these things when when the when the market starts to shake and bake like that, even on the ER, because technically, big picture was still bullish. So when it came down, right at the bottom, I added in more calls. And you think, how can you do that? Well, actually, not all my positions I can able to call bottom, but this was a precisely perfect entry. Uh, look at March thirteenth. Right there, 10th, March 10th, MGM added in more shares, MGM March 10th, so it's a Friday. Yeah, it's March 10th, hold on a second, right, right there. March, it's March 10th, it's March 10th, it just moves right there, it's, that, it's March 10th on that day. Obviously this was a level that I was looking at. Uh, this is a prior resistance. And then also if you do a Fibonacci here to here, here I'll do a real quick a little bit of demonstration there. I believe that's uh I don't I think I did a major, yeah I did a major low to high. Pretty sure that's what I did. So what I did was No, I think I did this. This is what I did. So yeah, that's what I did. So you can see that uh Fibonacci this was a level that you know this was a level that coinciding with the last level of my fifth this is what i call frz that coincides with the prior resistance so when you see when you look when you do a fibonacci analysis you also want to see if the price action is respecting that fibonacci i mean we did see a little bit of bounce right on that 50 percent, but it wasn't strong support so we came down and then we came down to the last level of it that is retesting that prior highs here so that was a great level of entry. I went added more calls there. And then this thing, a little bit of zigzagging, but it's doing very, very well here. I am, again, this is my active investing position. So, um, I mean, this was just stock on bubble crash, but it's starting to look a lot like this. Do you see that? It's starting to look a lot like it's going to, uh, I don't know if it's going to go that. I don't think so. It's going to probably be more slow, methodical move. But that's kind of how I'm going to play it. So what I'm going to do is that, I mean, market stock is not going to go straight up. That's what I'm saying is when stocks pull back, don't panic. It's an opportunity. That's what stock does. Goes up, comes down, adds some more. Goes up, comes down, adds some more. Uh, if this thing goes up to maybe 40, maybe I'll close a little bit and then wait for a pullback, add more. So that's going to be how I'm going to be actively investing this. And uh, I think it has a... It has a good future. MGM looks great. I mean, technically, it looks awesome. And lately, a lot of these casino stocks have been getting a lot of attention. You know, so, you know, that's why uh, my, my MLCO did well. My Las Vegas is still doing good. Uh, let's, uh, this is the last one. I'll let you guys go. Um, so this one is KB Home. So this one I actually did by uh, calls and shares. So this right there, I bought shares on eight, you know, September, no, 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 August 23rd. And then I bought calls at September 21st. So that's how I was like started accumulating positions here. Um, keep in mind, it wasn't all pretty right away. I mean, this looked like this was ready to thrive and I was looking for, and this thing plunged. But I held through it. I think I believe I threw a Fibonacci there. Yeah, right there. So you see, this, these are the levels that I did accumulate. I thought we are gonna see some bounce here, 50%. This was a good level of support as well, but we lost it. And a lot of this is how last time stocks do. It's gonna give you that one last fake out, traps everybody. It traps both longs 
and shorts because shorts are going to start going short. Longs are going to start closing their positions before that kind of move. You see that, right? I mean, look at this. This was that 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 major major bottom before we got up here. This is how the stock is gonna play, you guys. You guys under you gotta understand this. So even though I went you know, shares here, calls here, I don't panic. And again, I, I look at things in an objective way. Hey, this is the last level of fear. Let's see if we can hold. Did I know we're gonna see we're gonna see a bounce? I don't. Nobody does. But it's a probable or possible potential level of support. We saw bounce there, got up, came down, made a new high, pulled back again, held the levels, higher lows, and boom. Right? So back in eight, uh, September, August 23rd, Right there, KV home, stock shares, long-term position. I have a sizable position on this one at 16.07, August 23rd. 16.07 on KVH, right there. So 16.07, 16 or so. And then I got calls on September 22nd, September 21st, right? KVH. And you're at 15 calls, 9, 15, 19, as you can see. So September 21st, around 15, 19, KB home. Uh, that's like precisely right there, right? September 20, September, uh, September 21st, right? And then this is, I closed all my calls here. See, I cl and I'm still holding full shares. So. March 31st, I closed my shares, or calls, I'm holding full shares. So this was March 31st, closed half. So this was I entered calls, remember? September 21st, around 15 or so, in 1991. Again, I had to go through this. This is what it means to become a position trader. We don't freak out or panic on initial pullback. Because there's a chance it could have continued higher, there's a chance it could do a little head fake, right? And then 1991, okay, March 31st, KVH, closed out, and then April 20th, right? April 20th, closed remaining half calls, closed rest at 2058, closed half here, this is a call, but look at, Still holding full shares. Still holding full shares. So that's how I played it on KBH. So shares, calls, close that calls here, half, close another calls, and then holding shares. Full shares. Right? That's a pretty good move. I think shares is up about 30, 40%. That's a great, that's a great move. But uh, you know, we clear this resistance. We do have a extended, we are oversold on the weekly, on the monthly. So we could see a pullback, but I'll be holding my full shares here. I did close all my calls. So look, if I zoom out and then I'll end the video with this. It's starting to look a lot like, and I'm not saying, you know, something like here, left shoulder head, right shoulder. I mean, that's the neckline area right there. I mean, left shoulder head right shoulder, neckline, little bit of a bull trap there, little bit of trap there. That's why you don't chase a stock, you wait for a pullback, I start adding there, you see. So we're probably somewhere in that vicinity, wait for a pullback, when it pulls back, you don't freak out, you don't panic, you look for opportunity. There's a chance you could keep grinding higher and then pull back. And then when it pulls back, I'll probably adding more calls, some long-term long -term calls, and add more shares. So that's how I'm gonna play it, right? So, so that's uh, those are some of my positions that I'm currently holding, how I played it. One last look on Spider, I'll let you guys go. Um, you can see, we're still holding up here, so looking great. Um, again, I am open-minded to coming down to 240-ish if he does pull back. If you throw a 20 MA, that's the level you wanna watch for next support, but um, have a, have a wonderful weekend. Have a long, uh, relaxing Memorial Holiday weekend. Monday market is closed. So uh, good luck trading next week.